You're listening to the Walt Weekly Podcast with our host, Walter Latham, and our co-host, Michelle Sweeney McCombs. Voices in society impacting the culture. Georgia on our minds. The Georgia Senate elections. That's the name of this episode. This is Walter Latham along with Michelle Sweeney McCombs and the panel. Welcome, welcoming you to another episode of the Walt Weekly Podcast. Today, we want to take the time to thank our guests who graced our show during 2020. It was a broad spectrum from art to gun instruction. We covered a wide array of topics. Uh, we would like to also take the time to thank our esteemed panelists that make our live shows relevant and being a value add for our listeners. Above all, we would like to thank our audience. It is you who have helped us have this great year. We look forward to 2021 to roll out enhancements that will increase your listening listening experience and keep you engaged and informed. Since this is our last show of 2020, we have only one issue and you know we like to take care of business. All right, so business first, we want to talk about the Georgia Senate elections. That's the, that, that's, the, that's, that's the only somewhat heavy topic that we want to talk about today because this is our annual, this will be our annual show to end the year. Okay, so I want to turn it over to Michelle. And before I do that, let me just wish Greg, our panel member, a happy birthday. I understand today is your birthday, Greg. Yay, <laughs> yes, birthday. sir. Yes, sir. Uh, happy birthday. <laughs> <morning. laughs> Appreciate it. Happy birthday, uh, Greg. Salute, yeah. y'all. All right. All right. 57. Oh, get there one day. 57. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah, man. I'm 49, man. That's hey. I'm, I'm, I'm just a good day. <laughs> cool. Yay. I'm, I'm nowhere near yeah, right. 49 yet. <laughs> that's like Jack <laughs> Benny, man. I'm 49. Oh, that's it, man. <laughs> So anyway, let let let, let me uh, just thank all y'all guys, guests, and the panel members for a great year for the Walt Weekly. And I'm going to turn it over to Michelle. Yes. Yep. Yes. Great year. Thank you, Walter. Good evening, everyone, and happy holidays to you all. Today's Friday Live is brought to you by Women Black Owned Businesses, Beauty Blends by Ami and Soap and Love, all handmade, natural, and organic products. Use discount code for Walt Weekly at checkout. I will post their product information in the chat room. Uh, today, we have a uh, returning panel guest, Greg Coleman out of North Carolina, CEO of Illumination Media and Technology. Christopher Sweeney out of New Jersey, a retired New York sanitation worker and CEO of Johnny Rook's Catering. We have Ernest J. Robinson out of Washington, D.C., sergeant in the U.S. Marine Corps, Corps a combat veteran, senior consultant at B. Ernest Leadership and Professional Consultant. We also have Stephen A. Smith out of Atlanta, Georgia, educator, second chance, business funding, credit specialist, and Ms. Monique Lauderdale out of New York City, retired New York City Housing Authority property manager, former director of Raising Grace Scholarship Fund, and also a community theater actor. I will post everyone's social media handles and websites in the chat room. Let's give our sponsors and guest panel speakers some love, Walter. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, today's show, we, we will discuss Georgia <laughs> on our minds and take a look back at our success, back at on our successful Friday lives we have had during the pandemic and some holiday joy as well. So make sure you have a glass of wine, JD, Henny, whatever your choice of beverage is, along with some classic music we'll be playing later after we discuss Georgia. And um, back to you, Walter. All right. Okay. Anyway, let me just give a little um, background on what's going on in Georgia. I know everybody does know, but let me just reiterate it. Uh, the Senate currently stands at 50 Republicans and 48 Democrats. And if Democrats win both runoffs, right, there's, there's two 
So there are two Senate elections going on, All right? The party would have control over the Senate because the vice president-elect, Kamala Harris, would break any ties. So the Democrats have to win those two seats that are outstanding in Georgia. But if the Republicans win one of them, they will still retain control of the Senate. All right, so with that said, let's, let me just ask the panel. You know, I understand that almost one million out three ballots have gone out. Have you heard of any obstacles or any type of voter suppression? I'm going to direct that to our Atlanta panelists, Stevie, Stephen. Well, uh, you know, uh, there are a number of precincts that have been uh, shut down for early voting uh, for the runoff as opposed to the November 3rd election. Uh, and the excuse is that you know, traditionally runoff elections uh, are, are they don't have the type of uh, turnout, the same turnout that they do in uh, presidential or gubernatorial elections. But for this particular run, runoff election, this uh, has the potential to be just as uh, heavy in, in terms of um, of, of people voting as it was for the November 3rd election. Uh, be, uh, you have all of these uh, heavy hitting politicians that are coming from all over the country down to Georgia. They have descended on, on uh, in, in uh, Georgia and they are making, uh, I mean, all types of uh, uh, stops uh, all around the state. And, you know, the turnout is very, very heavy. I'm, I'm sure everyone has, uh, you know, seen the pictures and, and, uh, and you know, of, of all of the people that, are, that, because early voting started on the 14th this, this past Monday. Mm-hmm. Uh, I voted on Wednesday. My mother, my brother, you know, a, a bunch of uh, family members and friends have already voted. Uh, and it, it will end on, on the 31st. But there are much less uh, polling uh, outlets and uh, of course uh, the the ones that were pulled are are uh, it have been targeted in minority areas. Uh, I'm I'm very close to Cobb County, and Cobb County uh, used to uh, be a, a majority uh, uh, white county, but you know over the years it has uh, it, 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 the racial mix is uh, much more even, but uh, come to find out, Mableton, uh, Smyrna, uh, Austell, where there's heavy black and Latina population in, 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 in these towns in, in, uh, in Cobb County, right. uh, those precincts have been closed. Uh, you know, they, they, you have got to go out of your way to go to a polling precinct. The Cab County is, you know, a huge uh, black population. Uh, th- th- there were six uh, locations that were open, uh, down to two. Huge black population. Uh, you know, people are, are going way across town and going to, uh, you know, the, the, the centerpiece of, uh, of the Cab County, Decatur. And just to vote, and you know, and, and the lines are are, are ridiculous. Uh, they they've been showing it all across the news. Uh, Clayton County, huge black and Latino uh, population. Uh, Riverdale, Jonesboro, Rex, Morrow, all those areas, high concentration of black and Latina. All those polling pace, places. Uh, have been uh, shut down. Uh, it's more of a centralized uh, location, which is the biggest city in in, uh, in uh, Clayton County, which is Jonesboro. Uh, and uh, you know the, the access that everybody had to the NBA arenas all across the country. Uh, we had it here where the Atlanta Hawks play. Right. Don't have that now in Fulton County, which is the biggest county in Georgia. Uh, you you, you got to f- go find a polling precinct. So uh, I, I hope that illustrates uh, and, and illuminates uh, the right. question that was a- that was asked. 
Oh yeah, yeah, more than more so. Yeah, more than than what I I was looking for because I did want to talk about uh, there were seventy six thousand new voters. Uh, Did you hear about that versus the uh, general election? I hope they they are Democrats. I mean, did you get any idea of where these new voters are coming from? Uh, Well, you know, if if you don't know the name Stacey Abrams right now, she is. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. She is. She is something else. I mean, that woman there, it, you know, it, it has uh, she she delivered Georgia for Joe Biden. She delivered it. I mean, there's no yeah. sense or buts about it. And we're looking for her to uh, change change the map for uh, Ossoff and Warnock. Uh, she's she she is. Uh, you know, she she was screwed over, no doubt, 2018 uh, in the yeah. gubernatorial yeah. race against uh, uh, Brian Kemp, and she made it her mission to 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 go out and register voters, and uh, she she's registered uh, over 800 thousand voters over the yeah. last two years. People that otherwise yeah. would have never voted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, because I have here uh, 800,000 have voted through in-person polls and absentee vote ballots already. And you got 1.2 million more ballots that have been mailed out. Okay, so this is going to be bigger, almost as big or bigger than the uh, voting activity in the general election. So this is huge for y'all guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's huge for the country because, you know, without the Senate, you know, we're spinning our wheels, and that's what happened with President uh, Obama. But, but, but the the amount of money that's being pumped in by outsiders is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, Bloomberg and uh, uh, you know Spielberg. Uh, yeah, I, I guess uh, you, you know you, there's a common denominator in, the, in those names, Berg and Berg. But I mean, oh yeah, oh yeah, they're, oh, yeah. They're, they're, make, they're, they're, they're making all kinds of contributions. You got. Uh, people that ran uh, for president, they're all down here, man. It's, it, 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 you, you just you, you look at the local news and you see that they're here. This person is at this convention center. This person's at this thing. They're, they're running town halls. Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, Hillary Clinton, you know, I, all of the, it, 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 it's just, it, 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 they're doing both in person, uh, social distance, safe. Meetings not like that other character and in, in, in his events, or else they're doing the virtual. It's it's all over the place. I'm just so happy we don't have to talk about him. I don't even have him on the notes. So he's nah, irrelevant. Huh? He is not in the conversation today. <laughs> <laughs> who we who we talk about? I don't know, man. Boy, a ghost. He's ghost. He's ghost. He's ghost. He loves me there. Y'all are rough, man. Y'all have kicked him out, boy. Yeah, done. <laughs> Curl, yeah, too boy, much of our time. Too much air time for that orange drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you no know, I didn't, I didn't know that that Kelly Roffler, she's the one that, that that's uh, run up against so Warner. I didn't know she owned mm-hmm. an NBA team. The Atlanta oh, Dream. Very well, man. Yeah. The Atlanta Dream. That's amazing. She's on, she she's owned it. She got money, man. Yeah, she's loaded. She's one of the. She's running the richest, uh, the most, the wealthiest politicians in the country. So yeah, I didn't know that. <clears throat> she's the richest in Congress. She had no exactly. one in Congress has more money than her. Exactly. Wow. Inherited or self-made? A little of both. She's self. A little of both. Yeah, I believe she a little made of both. a lot of it on her own. Yeah. yeah well. We're... She inherited, she inherited quite a bit, and but you know she's also made you know pretty shrewd business moves. But hmm. she made made some investments. The the pandemic, yeah, she made it during the pandemic. Absolutely, wow. Well, she (laughs) absolutely. Her her husband owns Nasdaq or something like that. Really? No one does. Yeah, 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 that'll do it. Oh yeah, that'll do it. That's money, man. Yeah, but. but, you you got it. I, I I'm gonna um, send a, a text uh, to 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 the show of uh, the commercial. Uh, you know because Raphael Warnock is one of twelve children. He's the eleventh of twelve right. children, 
is, is yes. you know, and and he is the rags to riches candidate at at, right. at its core. Everything that he is he, he's done, you know, Pell grants and the whole nine to go through college yeah. and everything else. That's but right. but she tried to make her story. Did you know the same as his? Yes, you know, his yeah, really, yeah, which yeah. is hilarious. Yes. So mm-hmm. she's got commercials that she's self made, and it's just, it, it's truly right. hilarious. Rich and privileged. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, well, at least uh, she's not Donald She's worth, her, uh, her net worth is $165 million. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Well, see, anyway, I, I, I uh, I had a, a flashback or something. Something happened to me right then, just a moment ago. Sorry. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wanted I wanted to to kind of get things straight for the um, as far as the, the narrative of the conversation. Yes. Now, mm-hmm. when it comes down to to Democrats or Republicans in the Senate, it's those who have the majority, not necessarily the control per se. And reason why I say that is because we've seen and we need to give credit to Republicans um, who oppose certain things that are against what the majority of Americans would want. We've had very strong Republicans like Mitt Romney, who's been able to speak out against what the current administration has done. So there are allies that are there, but I don't want people to to listen to feel ostracized that, you know, the, the, the Democrats are in control because that's the narrative that they're pushing. So if we if we talk about who's going to be responsible and best for the job, I think that's the conversation that I think that everybody can get on because they, we have to realize there were a lot of Republicans who voted for President Obama in both 2008 and 2012, and all of those who have registered in Georgia, it doesn't matter if they're Republican or Democrat, so long as they um, vote for Warnoff and 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 Asa. Asa, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So that I mean Warnock, excuse me. So that, that that's that's what's most important about it. Oh yeah, I you know I agree. I yeah. agree. Yeah. But you know, I, I do have to look back at the history uh when you know uh President Obama had, was was when he was when he was in office, how uh Mr. Mm-hmm. Otto then they when they took control of the Senate, nothing everything stopped. Whatever was proposed from President Obama was just put to the side. But see, but get, but but that 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 was the key person was Mitch McConnell, yeah, not but, necessarily the Senate. Everybody fell in line. No, no, that's the, what I'm that's talking about. Everyone fell in line. Republicans fell in line. Right, but right. I mean, but that that goes to the person. And so if we were able to vote Mitch McConnell out, the dynamics of the Republican Party would be different. Just the same as what was what happened on in this past presidential election we'll see the dynamics change of Congress because that one person who has so much influence, influence. over it, that they will no longer be there. And so now everyone can make in the more independent decisions based upon the needs of the country versus the needs of their party or the leader of that uh, particular uh, faction. Right. And now I agree with I think, that. But you know, I, I think some of this toxic stuff came in with the tea party it wasn't just mcconnell it was a lot of things at work here a republican Chris. party really got turned upside down but they wanted a dog and, and mcconnell yeah. is a dog yeah. i mean he is the he he uh you know they needed somebody with the type of personality that uh that McC- i mean you know mcconnell will cite uh, that his biggest accomplishment, he has said it open and loudly, uh, of, of his political career was the fact that he blocked he blocked uh, Barack Obama from getting Merrick Garland as as a, a Supreme Court uh, uh, appointee, and he, he, he brags about it. He tells you, you know, and, and that that's the type of uh, leader, the Senate leader that they want, and that's what they're trying to protect. They want somebody. That's going to oppose any and everything that is proposed by uh, President Joe Biden, and and and, and so they they're doing their best to keep to keep uh, McConnell in power. Absolutely. So I mean, if if, if the uh, Republicans win one seat in Georgia, then we we're looking at status quo. Everything yep. is basically static; it's not going to change. So anything that 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 President Elect Biden 
uh, proposes, it's going to be stopped. Okay. Well, to Ernest's it, point, he's, he's yeah. hoping that there are some Republicans out there with a conscience that mm -hmm. will, you know, hopefully, but I doubt it. <laughs> I but, doubt uh, it. I doubt know, it. You know what I mean? I mean to, they, to, haven't, they haven't shown. And, and to be yeah. fair, there, there, there's been a number of Democrats who have detracted away from the, the majority as well. I mean, everything everything yes. that is on the Democrat side has not been unanimous. Oh no, and, oh, no. and we've and and, and 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 we've seen and we've seen people like the the, the whole term of a rhino and and Dinos or Republican in, in in name only, Democrat in name only. We've seen where Republicans have switched to the Democratic Party. Uh, I mean, I mean, excuse me, Republicans switched to the Independent Party. We've seen Democrats were switched to the Republican Party. And so it's it, we have to be mindful always of who we're actually putting in office. I mean, so everyone like from what Greg does uh, in, in down in North Carolina, what Stevie does, what, what everyone does in, in their respective areas, it's important that we select quality individuals, not just because right. you uh, right. affiliate yourself as a Democrat or affiliate yourself with a Republican or whatever the case may be, we want quality individuals and yeah, understand that we may have a quality individual, right, who may be a Republican. Because I can, yeah. I can tell you very honestly, at 2008 was the first time that I voted outside of the military for a presidential, or for, for a president. Mm -hmm. Had McCain not chosen Sarah Palin, I knew nothing about President Obama, Senator Obama at the time. Right, as, right. A, as a Marine, and 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 veterans, I would have voted for for John McCain. Yeah, okay. I, I didn't vote for John McCain, but I said I, I would have, and it wasn't because I recognized him as a Republican or a Democrat. I knew the type of character that he had, and mm -hmm. and his leadership ability, and that's the type of individuals we need to groom in our own communities so that we best can support them and prepare them to be in those positions so they can you know go against whomever and on, on any stage all right but yeah. what, what's the trend what, what has the trend been and i don't want to go too far you know on, yeah. on the topic but if you look at the trend you know in the last few years everything that came from the um, administration mm -hmm. that they didn't like was you know was was blocked by the and majority, and the me, majority were the Republicans, even though they may not have agreed with it, yeah. but they didn't say anything. Now that they were on the way out the door, they were resigning like the guy from uh, with Colorado. I can't think of his name right now off the top, but anybody that disagreed with 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 the uh, position of the Republicans, they were either leaving or retiring. They, you know, they were doing something. They weren't re running again. Right. So where was the I mean, backbone? This administration yes. is definitely polarized, you know, polarized the parties like like never before. I mean, this is is hopefully I'd love it if this is an anomaly. But, you know, to Gene's point, you know, we got to start, you know, voting for I mean, to uh, Ernest's mm -hmm. point, we got to start, you know, voting for quality candidates and not just candidates that are, you know, just easily swayed by the head of the party. Right. And to be honest. I don't mm -hmm. have any confidence in the Republican Party. They got to show me because for four years, this guy has insulted most of them. He's beat them up and they've come out and talked against them. But when it, when it came time to vote, they stood in line anyway. So mm -hmm. they got to show us something different. I, I you know? completely agree with Chris. I mean, if you looked over the last four years and, and, and I paid attention Without a doubt, Lisa Murkowski, Susan Collins, and uh, yep. Mitt, Rodney, Mitt Romney. Ted those Cruz. are the only three that 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 uh, were were swayable, you know, so called swayable. It was the same three over the last four years. Whenever there was something that uh, you know that, that 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 the idiot tried to get through, and they gave a, even the slightest bit of resistance. Yeah, but at the it. end, but in the end, they went along with. They it. still voted party. Mm -hmm. The only That's one right. that came out was McCain, right before he died, That's right. and he, he gave the thumbs down. He was the only yeah. one. They, they the all, one. they all mm -hmm. said they didn't mm -hmm. like certain things, but it wasn't enough to sway them. 
to go against their party. And, and, and to speak to Ernest's point, uh, Senator Joe Manchin in West Virginia uh, has not always voted, uh, for, you know, for, for the Democrats. He he is he's in a a a, a really 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 red state. And, yeah, West uh, Virginia. Yeah, in West Virginia, and he yeah. is he he's vacillated. He's gone back and forth. Uh, trying to keep his his power and, you know, <clears throat> there in West Virginia because uh, you know he he knows uh, that uh, you know he, he he's lucky to be a Democrat that happens to be from West Virginia. Okay, uh, yeah, Monique. Yeah, let me hear from you on this. What do you think? Um, I just want to make. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, I just want to make a clarification. Um, there are 46 uh, Democratic senators in the U.S. Senate and two independents. So that makes up the 48. Right. And the um, independents, um, they usually side with the uh, with the Democrats. Uh, Susan, uh, Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski are considered, um, quote unquote, moderate Republicans. Um, and Mitt Romney is considered, uh, a, he's, he's a conservative, but he will vote against his party on, I guess, sometimes, sometimes vote on his, against his party on moral principles um, because of his religion. Um, I don't quite remember him coming out. Maybe he did to make a statement regarding the children um, that were separated from their parents. Does anybody remember him coming out against that? No, I don't. I don't. Okay. No. But, but, yeah, remember, I uh, Mitt Romney came in in 18. He came in halfway through. He 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 wasn't there since sixteen. Right, right. Well, I want to bring uh -huh. uh, um, Gene Edwards. Well, that's true. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You guys can hear me. Yeah, who was just just speaking? It was Chris, or no, I think it was Steve. That was Steve. All right. Steve, you want to finish finish your, what you start? Well, no, 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 no. I was I, I was just uh, you know pointed pointed out by Mitt Romney, but I also want to say one other thing it, 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 with this with this very very slim majority. You know, uh, you have the, this battle within the Democratic Party between uh, you know the, the progressives and uh, you know who, who are very far left as opposed to uh, moderate uh, Democrats, and uh, you know there was a heavy push to get. Susan, uh, I mean, uh, excuse me, Elizabeth Warren, as well as Bernie Sanders in one of these mm -hmm. cabinet positions. Uh, but there's that delicate right. balance because of the fact that if Biden were to have picked one, if not both of them, who are, I mean, both of them are absolutely qualified to, to fill those cabinet positions in a runoff, it might not be a Democrat that wins the runoff. You know, so that was that's that little delicate balance, uh, you know, and, 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 and Monique, uh, um, you know, pointed out the exact uh, amount of uh, Democrats and independents. And I know Angus King is one of the independents. I'm not sure who the other independent is. Uh, isn't, isn't Bernie an independent? Yes, he is. OK, that's then the Bernie is. Yeah, OK. Oh, yeah, okay. from New Hampshire. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I, 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 right. OK. OK. All right. So. And let's, let's try to pivot back because it's a broad subject, but I just want to focus on Georgia. Uh, so what are the, the, the polls? What are you hearing between uh, Loeffler and Warnock? Well, and it is, you know, I'm talking to Steve here. All right. Uh, yeah, well, I, 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 I'm speaking uh, enough tonight, but uh, the bottom line is is that the Ossoff and, and Purdue polls are very, very close. And during the general election, Purdue actually won. He, he, mm. he, but he didn't meet the threshold, the 50 percent threshold, yeah. right, yeah. To, to get it. So he, that's why there's a runoff. Now, the, what, what's different is there, there were in, in, in the November 3rd runoff with Warnock, Leffler, and there was another gentleman, I'm trying to remember his name, uh, Collins, another Collins, Doug Collins, that's his name. Uh, I remember him. He used to play for the 76ers, but not, it's not the same person. But anyway. Um, <laughs> right, the <laughs> coach. <laughs> right. It, it, but uh, Doug Collins is giving Leffler uh, a lot of nonsense here. 
And, uh, it, you know, even though Leffler got had, you know, uh, got more vo votes, which is why it was just, she singularly uh, opposing Warnock. Uh, but right now, Warnock is, a, is, is ahead. And oh, my God, if you guys see the commercials, you know, the, uh, <laughs> the, ra the, 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 the racists are out, man. I mean, you know, Jeremiah Wright. Yes, Jeremiah oh, Wright. Name. Two, yeah, two, he, he, two, 2008 with the Obama campaign is back, you know, because yeah. Warren, Raphael Warnock uh, said something positive about him while Barack Obama was uh, was uh, was running in 2008. Because you remember that all of that nonsense came oh, up. Yeah, Obama. yeah, 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 yeah. And, right, and, and, and we're flooded all day with old Jeremiah Wright footage it's all it, it, i mean i it, i see that commercial seven eight times a day if i if i have the tv on it's just so, that that's what's going on down here it's ridiculous so 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 i want to i want to i want to say something about that because one jeremiah Wright, that's my fraternity brother and <laughs> and he, he 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 also went to virginia union university as well okay. um, at hbcu in richmond for those who don't know um but the what and, and also I want to tie in uh when Chris said he wasn't, you know, real um wasn't impressed by the Republican Party, but I think we should also be equally as unimpressed with the Democratic Party. Because throughout all of this time, nobody's actually straightened out the Jeremiah Wright situation to be able to express and actually put in context to what he was actually saying during that particular um sermon, sermon. that he was given. Right. So the, the thing is, is that, you know, when it's time to speak up, are the Democrats speaking up enough? Like we, we, we can talk about and name each Republican that doesn't speak up when they should oppose something that is egregious to, you know, uh, to the to to America. But do we talk about the same Democrats who don't speak up? Because how many of them has been as vocal as they needed to be throughout the past four years? We can count on our hands probably a few of them that have spoken out, you know, vehemently and consistently, not when it's convenient. So many of them go in the same back rooms and they laugh and joke and smoke with, with, with whomever on the other side. And so we need to hold them accountable just the same because that commercial that's running down in Georgia shouldn't be running because there should have been enough people who have put that in context. <clears throat> So that way, it should not be used or shouldn't been weaponized against Warnock today. Well, I, I just want to say something to you, uh, Ernest. I, and uh, the bottom line is, is that it's all nonsense from the get go. Uh, because right, right. You, you can't pull that, you know, footage from something twenty years ago and try. But it's the, you know, uh, I, I've had conversations. We've had conversations on the pal panel in reference to the defund the police. They take something and they run with it. That's all. You know. Yes, I, mm -hmm. I, I'm. I'm not happy with the Democratic Party's response uh, to uh, uh, things. You know, and, and uh, aside from that Jeremiah Wright issue, there's a whole bunch of issues within the Democratic Party. But the bottom line is, is that you know, they take. Stuff. It doesn't matter how old it is. I mean, defund the police is heavy, heavy, heavy. You know, uh, Raphael Warnock said in a sermon that Palestinian lives matter, and they've they've uh, manipulated it to the point where as it's uh, he's against the Jews. <laughs> All he did was say Palestinian lives matter. You know, it, 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 and Palestinian lives matter. Jeremiah yeah. Wright, you know, he defended him. You know what I'm saying? He just said, hey, listen, you know, this is all nonsense. Uh, that's all. I, but, but they take, and, and you want to know that, that the thing that has become increasingly apparent to me is, is that when Raphael Warnock was making these sermons, okay, how did these Republicans get this footage? A black man, I believe, had to be the one that sent this to him. <laughs> I mean, let's call it what it is. It, it, you know, I, it, well, no, no, they're, they're televised. You know, no, they're te you know they're televised. Right, I understand, yeah. but you know, did, did some yeah. some of this stuff, it, it, it just I, 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 it was the up money close. Talks. The money talks. You know what I mean? That's all. I, it is. 
I want to say this to, to Ernest. On this show, we have come down on Democrats. They have a big problem with their messaging. They are all Thank over you. the place with the their messaging. messaging. They don't get the message out properly. I, I even put that on, on the Obama administration. They did a lot of things for African Americans, but they didn't they didn't put it out there. They didn't let people know a lot of it was hijacked by the next administration, you know, True. as as if they did it. But their messaging is a problem. But the past four to to to, to eight years it's been the Republican Party mostly that have been wrecking government. They have been obstructionists That's throughout. True. They have been obstructionists for the last part of Obama's administration, and they have been working hand in hand with Trump. They have not opposed him on one thing. I agree. So with right you. now they got the power. They're the ones being the obstructionists. So. We're talking about them. If if the shoe was on the other foot, the Democrats are doing a lot of things. But you know what? They're not they're not making any noise because they don't have any power right now. They don't control Senate, and that's the bottom line. So whoever's in control, that's who we we we're looking to. In the past six to eight years, the Republican Party has been the party of obstruction. From um, Paul Ryan, that, that's his name, uh, to Baynard, yeah, all Paul of them. They had, yeah. they had no respect for President Obama. Time and time again, they came out, and they have been the party of obstruction. And really, they're showing their, 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 their true character. A lot of it is, is rooted in racist behavior. Well, then, I, I but the one thing we you, have but, to, uh, uh, if I can interject, if I can interject. Yeah. One thing we have to go fall back on is some of it's our fault because in the 2010 midterms, there was a big influx of Republican winners. So from 2010 forward, President Obama couldn't get through his agenda. The last thing he got through was the ACA, and that that was prior to 2010. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. And 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 uh, so we didn't to piggyback on Chris. To piggyback on Chris's point. Uh, which I completely agree with. Uh, you know, look at the way the Democrats are going, all the infighting right now. I mean, you know, I, 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 I uh, really appreciated AOC and some of her views in the past, but I don't like her attacking Nancy Pelosi and, uh, you know, because of her age. She's pushing I Pelosi. Cool. Yeah, I, 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 well, nah. But I, you I, know I, what? I, think I, don't I, have, I don't like that. I don't have a problem with that. I think Pelosi and Schumer need to be pushed. Look, they really do. Uh, they have but not, very not, not because of the age, though. That's the that's the only thing. No, no, no. I don't think it's the age. I think she's just grasping for anything to try to to move her out of that space. And I think there is a time for new breath, the, the new ideas, uh, fresh I, a fresh I, I approach, and a more aggressive approach. I think the Democrats have been very docile. They've been they've been pushed around. They've been bullied. Yes, and they got to right. start. They got to stand up and get their message out, and 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 stop tippy toeing around these people. You know, again, I say this all the time. They are um, creatures of um, they, they they believe in the in the process, and sometimes when you have somebody that comes and turns the process upside down, you gotta you gotta get dirty a little bit. Yeah, yeah, they I haven't I, yeah. been willing to you, do that. You gotta get a little nasty. You're 100 percent right in that. And and and, and again, they, they they've been holding form and 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 trying to, uh, you know, to, to be decent. You're dealing with a party that's been indecent. Exactly. <laughs> They yeah, should charge them for treason. Right. That's what they should do. Yes. Right, but yeah, yes. that was one of the yeah. things. That was one of the things that we had on the agenda. But since this is the last show of the year, we wanted to turn to festivities uh, because we always go, on, you know, on the deep, on the dark side of things. We we've been talking about the dark side of things for a while, but we want to lighten up this week. And uh, since it's our last show of the year. I want to turn it over to Michelle so that we can talk about 
you know, what we've accomplished, what y'all guys see for that was done for this year, what you see for next year. I, I, I want to go there. Okay. Yeah. And I want to move away from this because this is going to be there. The most important thing that I can say is that Trump will no longer be there. That was the first. Yay! Yeah. Okay? That was the first battle. Thank you all. That's hey, right. Amen. That's right. That's it. Now, 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 what y'all guys are talking about is, is, is the next battle. Because the war, mm-hmm. that's just, you know, Trump was just a, a, a battle. The war is not over. Okay? So we have to turn that's to right. the Democrats and say, okay, fine. But this is a political show. So I say that, and I say that with, 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 uh, no, I'm, I'm not lying, guys. This is an apolitical show, but things have occurred. So if it has an impact on the community, then we have to call it out. And that's what we've been doing for the last two months. Okay? So, but I'm going to turn it over to Michelle. Michelle. Yes, thank you, Walter. So we have had such an amazing year with our Friday Lives. You know, thanks to our panel contributing on a weekly basis. We appreciate you guys giving your time monique coming in towards the end we appreciate you we love you guys you have made this these, this pandemic time for us phenomenal you know we can't thank you guys enough um so i just want to shout out you know past guests that have been on here that have supported us that have not charged us for this they have been gracious enough to come on our show and help us they are from the arts State representatives, entertainers. I'm um, gonna shout out the first one, which is my my handsome son, Justin nephew, aka uh, Uncle nephew. He I. Yeah, he I. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty industry. We have some wonderful ladies that came on here: Deborah Hare, Duchess, and Kia Sterling. We had Mr. Danny Simmons. Uh, some other musicians: Marcus Machado, Kendra Foster. Mixmaster Ice, uh, Jay Swiss and Essen Sean, Jeru Jones, we've had fashion icons, Tanya Giddens, Io in Motion, musician Kim Hampton, retired WNBA, uh, Taylor Made Productions, Ta- Todd Taylor, uh, actress and model Diamandi Devereaux, these people are uh, listening as well, media reporter Sierra Ross, Diva with Depression, Donna Hairston, photographer and artist Christine Cruz, and Officer Harper Milo, New York City uh, Police Department, environmental activist Melissa Banks, musician Benjamin Costin. We had so many essential workers, teachers, uh, everyone affiliated in different areas, uh, and field work, um, corporate people. We thank you all for uh, participating and you know to our incredible panel. You know, what can I say about you guys? You guys are very wonderful. And thank you, mm-hmm. Michelle. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank yes. you, Michelle Sweeney here. Yes, yes, yes. And we appreciate you guys. We ask our audience who has been loyal to us, our listeners, the people that come on the chat every week. We really appreciate you guys. Marge, uh, Malik, Shelton, a.k.a. Shelton. Mr. Sweeney is on there. Shout out to you. Thank you. Um, a- um, Adrian Wilson. You know, there's a lot of people on here that we would like to thank. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and I would like for my panel right now to shout out your loved ones. Say something for the holidays. We're going to start in order. We're going to start with Ernest. Please start. Say something to your family, to our audience. The floor is open to everyone to say something. I'm going to play um, Christmas music in the background. Ernest, please. Oh, you ready, I brother? Go ahead. Okay. Say um, something to your loved ones. Wanna, any, any shout uh, out? What your experiences my, are on here? Go ahead. You got the floor. My, yeah. Now, I, I one I want to thank. Uh, one I want to thank Walter uh, for for reaching out um, and inviting me um, to this platform. Uh, Michelle, for your. Uh, it, it, matter of fact, you and Walter for y'all diligence each and every week to come up with the questions. Um, the topics that we'll talk about each and every day, uh, each and every week, has been an awesome experience. Um, yes. Just shout out to my to my family. Uh, let's you know, 
prayer for those who have have lost loved ones over this this COVID period, um, those yeah. who have uh, food insecurities, um, those who may be facing some some tough situations. Um, that there there will be brighter days, you know, ahead of us all. Um, yes. So if there's something that that we all can do, if we can donate our time or or what you know whatever we can give to somebody else who's less fortunate you know please think about doing that um one thing i will leave with everybody is there's this um poem by um ham gane and it what it, it reads um i've come to the frightening conclusion that i am the decisive element it is my personal approach that creates the climate it is my daily mood that makes the weather i possess tremendous power to make life miserable or joyous. I can be a tool of torture or an instrument of inspiration. I can humiliate or humor, hurt or heal. In all situations, it is my response that decides whether a crisis is escalated or de-escalated and a person is humanized or dehumanized. If we treat people as they are, we make them worse. If we treat people as they ought to be, we help them become what they are capable of becoming. So I hope that everyone who ends 2020 ends it off with, you know, with hope that things are going to be better tomorrow, that we do a better of treating and loving one another. And I thank you, Walter and Michelle, for giving me the opportunity to participate on this panel. Thank you, Ernest. Thank, thank you, Ernest. Ernest. Thank Ernest, you. you're up next. Yes, thank you. Hey, so I want to start off by thanking Walter and Michelle for including me every week. I look forward to it. I've learned so much, you know, by being a contributor here, but I've learned more. And um, it leads me hopeful. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting Walter and his wife uh, over the summer. It was great to put a face to the voice. And it was a pleasure meeting him. Yeah, it was yeah, nice. It was a pleasure meeting him. And even having the show, you know, hearing from Steve and Greg, who, who I've known for years, but we haven't seen each other, you know, over the years. And finally hearing Monique's voice, which I love. You know, I haven't <laughs> seen her in a long time. Hey, and Chris. It's great. <laughs> hey, hey. And um, also, just, you know, moving, to, having these discussions are important. And it's something that we, we need to do. We don't always all agree, and we're not supposed to agree. But when we have the discussion and we respect each other's opinions, we actually get something accomplished. We move the needle. We find out, you know, what's going on in other parts of the world. You know, we live in New York, New Jersey, uh, Virginia, Atlanta, but it's a big country. There's a lot of things going on and everybody doesn't have the same, they don't share the same experiences we do. So it's important to listen and to be mindful. Also, over the past, uh, last couple of days, I, I went with my brother. We took some, some uh, we donated some clothes to a woman's shelter. It's the time of year where people need, you know, my, my daughter and my grandson, they had some clothes that you know, he's growing so quickly, he outgrew, and there's a lot of kids at the shelter, so it was great to uh, bring those clothes. I also, every year, along with a, a, a couple of friends of mine, we pick a couple of kids from uh, different mm -hmm. shelters all over the country. We try to contact our friends in different states, and they give us kids, and, they, and we ask those kids to give us a list of things that they want for Christmas. And we try to, you know, fill that list. We pick, we each pick a kid, a child, and we, we, we buy a toy. We try to get some clothing, something to help out. So I encourage everybody to try to look into that because that's what the holiday season is all about. It's not about, mm -hmm. you know, giving gifts. It's about helping people. And, you know, we got uh, 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 the housing uh, issue coming up mm -hmm. on 1231. We got a lot of people that could be, evicted so I'm just up, you know if we can if we can find one or two people in your lives to share something with it makes a difference i want you all to have a great holiday i appreciate and love everybody here thank you chris we love you too you, guys, you know that yes we're yes. not on a time restraint right now so you guys can take your time steve you're up next 
Can, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Oh, okay, great. Uh, listen, uh, you know, this has been a, a crazy uh, year uh, for, uh, you know, all of us. Uh, we're dealing with a situation that uh, none of us have anticipated. But, uh, you know, one great thing uh, is, is that we're all here. Yes, <laughs> that is yes. that is an, an absolutely amazing thing because uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, as, as was previously said, uh, so many people haven't uh, haven't you know made it through, and I want to say God bless their souls and God bless their families because there's a uh, there's an empty chair uh, right around the holidays. But on a positive note, uh, you know, uh, uh, one thing. Uh, as it pertains to this particular show, uh, is is that uh, again, you know, just just reiterating some of the things that Chris said, uh, and and that was said uh, by, by Ernest. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's so important to have a platform and to learn from others. I mean, you know, we we all have our opinions. You know, that they say they're like buttholes, and 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 uh, you know, but you have to listen. Uh, to other people's perspectives in order to really, uh, you know, form strong uh, opinions. Because uh, if you just think uh, that, you know, yours is the only one that's valid, then you're really lost in the sauce. Uh, yeah. You know, the, uh, you know, Walter, uh, my, uh, my, my longtime partner, Michelle, uh, oh, yeah, thank you yes. for extending an invitation uh, to me. Uh, this this was a format that I hadn't really been exposed to. I've done some public speaking uh, all over the right. place, but I've never done a podcast. And I had an opportunity uh, to uh, uh, to speak to, uh, on, in, in this particular format. It's truly been a blessing. Uh, yes. And I look forward to some more amazing shows in 2021 as the World Weekly pod Podcast gets bigger and bigger. I want to wish everyone... Uh, in, in this crazy year, a, a, a mm -hmm. you know happy happy holiday. Thank you. Uh, and let, let's let's Thank have you. a let's have a positive outlook. Yes, I mean, yes. you know, in 13 days, uh, this this year is going to be over, and we're going to go into 20 to 21. And right. uh, you know, let's just remain optimistic. Uh, you know, we don't know yeah. what the heck is going on, but let's yeah. just remain. We need you to pull. We need Georgia to pull yeah. through, Steve. Make it happen. Right. Come and on, this, man. Yes, <laughs> and, and I will. Uh, you know, for, for the benefit of uh, America for the benefit of the people of Georgia and for the benefit of uh, the, the people on the, on the Walt Weekly show make sure that I go out and, and, and get more people to the polls uh, you know um, January 5th is very very important uh, you know not just uh, you know it, it, we, we just need uh, for the, the president elect uh, to to have an opportunity to to, to put forth his uh, you know the programs that he wants to initiate. Uh, I'm, I'm you know the last thing I'll say is, is I'm so so uh, happy to see a a an administration that's being put forward that reflects what the United States of America looks like. That that makes me proud. Uh, yes. Whether it was on either side, it, it didn't matter right. what side it was. Right. It, it, you know, uh, but uh, old white men making decisions uh, during my entire life uh, lifetime, for the most part, has gotten stale. Let let an administration look like the country that uh, mm -hmm. you know that Ernest uh, Gregg and, and myself served and would, would have had to have fought for <laughs> okay right right and, and i and i, I, I and ernest from what i understand today i just found out that he did uh, okay and um again happy mm -hmm. holidays everyone okay. that was wonderful. thank you thank you wonderful. so much thank that you for that uh, we're gonna pass the mic to monique now happy holidays everybody happy yes. holidays yes happy holidays. um i just want to I just want to say thank you to Michelle for reaching out to me and to Walt. And um, I've not met um, 
uh, Greg or um, Steve, but um, I've heard about you throughout all these years. <laughs> right. And um, Michelle is not only a friend, but she's my sister friend. Um, I met her through her mom, and we became good friends, and her mother just adopted me as one of her own. So yes. God rest her soul, and um, I'm so grateful for having um, her and Chris um, in my life. Um, I just want to say, you know, um, that for the families who are suffering um, right now, especially this time of year, because they don't have their loved ones with them, um, you know, like me as well, um, basically all my family is gone, you know, my major family. So I, I, I don't consider um, uh, blood relatives um, the sole source of, 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 of my love. I call my, my um, friends my love relatives because, you know, it's who you love and who loves you. So that's the message that we've got to spread right. this year. And also remember the uh, reason for the season. You know, I, I'm a Christian and, and I do believe in God and, and Christ. And it's about his birthday and not others. But we should, you know, it's it's important to give, you know, all throughout the year, whatever we can give, space it out. You know, not just, you know, during, during the quote unquote holidays, the secular holidays. Um, you know, we've got to make it our mission. Even if it's just a, you know, a, a phone call, um, people are suffering from mental health issues that we've not addressed, which I hope we would in the future, especially in the black community. Um, you know, especially during this time of year, it can be very harrowing for people who, you know, live alone, don't have the support, um, you know, during this time of the season. So, you know, I'd like to remember those who are suffering as well. Yeah. And, um, just, you know, in the future, going forward, uh, let's just, like everyone said, listen to other people's views and, and just try to get together to do what we can for our communities um, yes. in whatever capacity we can give. So right. happy holidays again, and um, God Thank bless you. you all. God bless you. Thank you. Passing Thank the you mic me. to birthday boy, Greg. Yeah, yeah. Greg. Yeah. Now we can, yes. Okay, I just want to thank Michelle Walk. Uh, Jean, uh, Monique, it's just been, you know, absolutely uh, great being on here with y'all for the for the entire year, uh, learning from from everybody, and this this is what I call empowerment. Uh, this is exactly, you know, the first step. Every single one of us make a difference, and um, I, I think, you know, the common theme that, you know, what this all comes down to, you know, a lot went on this year. Uh, but we gotta we gotta get through it with uh, with decency and love. We gotta we gotta spread that, especially during this this time of year. There's a lot of loss, a lot of people going through some things, and, and the main thing we can do is spread love because that's that's really why we're concerned as much as we are because we do love our, our our fellow fellow man, our brothers and sisters, and and humanity, and and yes. hate to see that minimized. So just continue to love, continue to have faith. And uh, we uh, appreciate all y'all. Amazing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Greg. Thank you all. You all wonderful. Happy birthday um, again. Everyone, if you have a fake glass Thank or a real you. glass, raise your, <laughs> raise your glasses. Raise your glasses, everyone. We love you and thank you for a great year. We're looking forward to bigger things in 2021. We want to thank you all for your support of the World Weekly. Cheers to everyone out there in our audience that are listening and will be listening when we do a rebroadcast. Raise your glasses, put an emoji in there in the chat room. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. May God continue to bless you all during the holidays and have a wonderful new year. Wear your mask, be safe. Walter, you want to find, uh, end it off? Uh, yes, I, I just want to, you know, whatever Michelle just said, I know. <laughs> Yes. I, I I am so proud of being a part of it. I, I never dreamed that you know we we would we would have something that that gives something back. And, you know we we always plan to have things and we say okay this is the way it's going to go. But I am so pleasantly surprised of the panel, the people we were able to interview yes. and bring and having Michelle by my side in this effort, this endeavor. And, and uh, yeah. you know, we, we, you know, I love all of y'all guys. That's all I can say. But we yeah. can't forget about the ones that 
are having a, a rough time right now. And I say this again, just hang in there. Things will get better. Yes, and sir. And have yes, a sir. merry, merry Christmas, a merry Hanta, Hanukkah, and a very, happy very Kwanzaa. happy new year. Yes, and happy God Kwanzaa. Bless all of you. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. God bless yes. All of you. And thanks for joining Love the you world. all, guys. We'll, we will all be right. talking outside of the World Weekly. Everyone, see you in 2021. All Stay right. blessed and be well. Thank you. Love you Bye. All. All right. Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye. Peace. Peace.